Hi, my name is William Stedman and I work at Cruz as a scientific programmer and I'll be taking you through our technical intro videos showing you how to set up a device and some of the key steps and processes within our Cruz tool set. To explain them, we'd like to use this diagram below. So I'll be showing how to set up a device um, as well as doing open loop optimal control. Here we take that model of the device and we use that to determine the optimal set of control pulses. After doing that, my colleague Alistair in a follow-up video will show how to do closed-loop calibration. Here we're interfacing with the device, the physical device, and showing them how you can use that to update these parameters to make up for errors or gaps in the model. Then we like to close this whole process in a step we call model learning. Here we take a set of these calibration runs and we feed that into the model that we've configured in Cruz and use that to update that model to make up for more details in those gaps and also then improves the calibration process in the future by being closer to the actual true values. Um, we'll be putting a link to the notebook below the video. And I've also created this convenience function if you want to skip ahead. Well, here we'll just go and show you how you can, in one step, set up a whole device. But I'll be going through that step by step now. So let's get started. So just as the first step, I would like to run some uh, imports here, as well as setting some parameters for matplotlib and for controlling Qiskit. Now, for today, we'll be setting up a single qubit device, and I've listed here some of our parameters. So it'll be a transmon at 5 gigahertz, and we'll be modeling three levels, as well as having an anharmonicity of 210 megahertz. We also have some parameters for the single generation, so the resolution of our automatic waveform generator, and I'll be configuring uh, pi over two rotation gates, so we'll have a gate time of seven nanoseconds. Now, how do we take these parameters and feed them into Cruise? So in Cruise, we like to talk about components. So we use components to really model all sorts of systems. We have components for Rydberg atoms, for spins, for transmons, but I'll be using the generic qubit component here. So here, we just set that frequency and harmonicity, and as we said, the number of qubit levels. Now we'll also set up what we call a drive. In the drive, we can specify the form of the Hamiltonian. So in this case, I'll be doing an X drive. And we also have a library of different Hamiltonians to work. In the simple case, we'll just have one qubit and one drive, which together will make our model. But in more complicated systems, you can also use this to determine the coupling between the qubits. And we also have the couplers, both tunable and fixed, that you can really set up for any set of hardware, any set of topology. So now we have our model. Now, after that model, we go and set up our signal generation chain. We also have a set of generation components, so for example, a local oscillator feeding into make our carrier wave, as well as going and doing a automatic waveform generation and a DAC feeding in to make our form of our envelope, and you can specify different noise characteristics for each of those components. In this case, I'll just take a no noise environment of our simple generator, for example, but as I say, you can also fully configure that to make a realistic setup. So now with our signal generation and model defined individually, we need to bring that together to see how they relate to the instructions that we're trying to implement. So I'll start here with this RX90 plus uh, instruction. And we just need to say the form that our parameters will take. So in this case, I'll go and set these parameters for a character carrier, and we'll be using a Gaussian uh, envelope. So this will be the form of our Gaussian parameters. However, we really support different types of envelopes, and that's up to you. So having run that, I'm going to simply show how you can take that now and just copy this to create our other gates since they have a very similar form, and we only just have to change what's different. So in this case, the xy angle, and I've also set the ideal form of the gates. So together now, we have our four gates that I'll be working with, and we're going to show how you put this all together in the parameter map. So Typically, you might have a script that already to set up the device configuration, or you can read it from a config file. And then the parameter map is how you can access all this information really in one single spot. So we have the instructions, the model, and that generator that I've described. And to actually run some simulations now, we just put what we call an experiment. So we can also determine some of the forms of our simulations. So that's really setting up our whole device. Uh, now, as the next step, let's go and show how you can plot some information from the device, and then I'll go and do some optimal control of this. So, to plot some information, get some intuition of our system, I have here that we'll start with an initial state, 
all in the ground state. And then we'll go and do a very, very small sequence here of just a single gate. Um, you can see here the plot of our populations here. We can see that the zero state goes and decreases, but it doesn't end up as an equal superposition as we would expect. That's because we chose some non-optimal values. If you'd prefer to interface using Qiskit, we also support that. So here I've just shown that you can run a Qiskit circuit here, just as below, above here. And the only thing you need to do is configure our cruise simulator as a backend, and that will interface with whatever you've set up with Qiskit various scripts. So as you see here, that goes and does, um, we see similarly that we have this non-equal uh, populations, and just to show that also as a histogram. Now, we would like to go and actually show how we can go and achieve this optimal equal superposition, so we'll show that using our optimal control step here. So just kind of as an intro, um, we try to be very flexible, and so with that parameter map, we can really take any set of different quantities and different parameters, and then we need to specify what we actually want to optimize. And so what we do is we could what we call an opt map. Here we're saying different groups of instructions, and we can say how they're related. So in this case, for example, I'll be taking these four uh, 90 rotation gates, and I'll say that I'll link that the amplitude for the Gaussian envelope will always be the same, but you could also specify them in individual lists, and then you can vary as much as you want. Um, and as I say, you can also choose kind of really any form of your parameters. So here, kind of using some convenience, we'll go and find all the of our parameters that match this form, that it's a Gaussian and the amplitude, or for example, the delta we had before, and we'll set that for this op map. And just to kind of give you some intuition, we can print this all below. So you see here all of these groups for the different four gates, and then the original values that they will take. We've also specified above um, the range. So you can kind of see that we'll go and specify how that they can vary. And when we run the optimal control, we'll see that these values will change. Now, to actually run the optimal control, we got to specify the algorithm that we'll use as well as some parameters. So we try to be very agnostic. We use both uh, gradient-based and gradient-free based, and it's really up to you to specify this algorithm. We have also, for example, developing internally a machine learning algorithms to speed up the process. Um, what we'll do is we'll specify the form of our fidelity function. So I'll be taking the unitary infidelity, and it'll be averaged across the set of instructions that we'll be using. And since we only have one qubit, but I'll just say that we'll be focused on this one qubit. Um, I also have here, for example, how we would like to plot. We can do different ways to record all this data, but just so that you can kind of use it, and we'll configure that and now run this. Now, when we run this, you'll see it'll take a few seconds because we use TensorFlow to uh, provide the gradients. It'll take a few seconds for it to compile the instructions, and then it runs very quickly. And at the end here, we see we get a very, very low infidelity, so very, very high fidelity across the four gates. So now we've done that, we can now update our simulation with our new values, and we can redraw the dynamics. So I'll do that. And now we can see much better picture that at the end we really do achieve a very, very close equal superposition between the zero and the one state, and our excise state is also very, very low. So just to show that, that average infidelity, we can see here's this zero, 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 six, nine, and then we can print our updated parameters here. So now these are our four set, and they're linked as I said before. Instead, for example, we did not put in the x, y angle, so they're at their fixed initial values, each with a pi over two offset. Now, just to show that again, we can now provide this new simulation that's been updated that can be sent to the, as the back end to Qiskit, and we can also see that we'll get the updated values from Qiskit, and we can plot that below. That really provides a basic introduction. Now, as I say in the follow-up video, Alistair will show how we can now take these optimal parameters and feed that in for a calibration process. So I hope you'll study and watch his video.